Operation Iraqi Freedom toppled Saddam's government in less than a month, but that was three years ago. The terrorist opposition is still killing Americans and Iraqis, though U.S. casualties are down and the attacks have become less frequent. Here in Washington, Defense Secretary Rumsfeld is under heavy fire, most recently from a few men close to the Pentagon itself, who say Rumsfeld doesn't have what it takes to fight the war on terror. If this leader is not capable of doing it, and in now going on excess of five years has not demonstrated he is, then perhaps it's time to find a new one. And you believe that Secretary Rumsfeld should leave? If I was the president, I would have relieved him three years ago. Paul Van Riper is one of a handful of retired generals who last spring went public with their view that Donald Rumsfeld must go. Before retiring, Van Riper was the commanding general of the Marine Corps Combat Development. He left the military in 1997 before Rumsfeld took office. Do you think Secretary Rumsfeld is stubborn? By all, by all reports, very stubborn. Doesn't listen to advice? Apparently not. The advice Rumsfeld is most often accused of ignoring was to send more troops to Iraq. The idea that it would take several hundred thousand U.S. forces, I think, is far from the mark. I was asked to be a senior mentor for a training exercise which used the plan as it stood at that time, which was November of 2002. The Iraq War Plan. The Iraq War Plan. When the war started, and I saw about half the number of units on the ground, I was surprised. What do you think happened? What I think happened is at the very senior leadership in the civilian, you have those, and we're talking now not only the secretary at the time, but the deputy secretary, who are not professionally schooled. They don't understand war. I was in the middle of part of this, and the U.S. Army had a plan for Iraq that was an absurdity. I mean, it was a, it's this World War II style, massive, slow, sluggish thing. And Rumsfeld said, wait a second. I think, you know, I can take one third the number of troops you want. And instead of it taking six months to a year, I mean, we can be there in a month. And as you've seen, the U.S. military toppled Saddam's regime in record time with an unexpectedly low number of casualties. But the post-war was not so neat. General Van Riper blames that on Rumsfeld's insistence on fewer troops. But do you believe that that decision was solely Secretary Rumsfeld's decision? The number of troops going in? Uh, I would be surprised uh, if there wasn't some military advice at that time. Do you think they just dropped the ball and were intimidated by Secretary Rumsfeld? They accept it because they're good soldiers, and I guess there could be a few cases where they're simply concerned about their careers. There wasn't anything we did in the Iraq war, in the planning, or in the aftermath, that he didn't have the advice of his military advisors, and that we didn't all agree. There are more than 7,000 retired generals who have not criticized the secretary. One of them is Richard Myers, who served as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff through the planning and invasion of Iraq conventional wisdom became that he was a micromanager of that war. He did not uh, micromanage the war. He was micro-informed because of the consequences of what we were doing, the consequences of putting American men and women at risk. I don't know of a, a decision, a major decision, or even most minor decisions that he made without consulting either me or, or General Pete Pace or generally both of us together. He wants to hear everybody's ideas. That said, current Joint Chiefs Chairman Marine General Peter Pace says that when Rumsfeld thinks he knows the right way to do something, he pushes that view hard. There's absolutely no doubt that once he has conviction about what he wants to do and how he wants to get it done, that he drives that idea to conclusion. Some people say he rules with an iron fist in this building. What do you think? I say they don't know him. You don't lead by command in this place, you lead by consent, because no one's smart enough to divine what we ought to do in a totally new world, a new century, a new kind of war. So it's your way or the highway is not uh, true. It is so wrong, it's just unbelievable. The generals who went public earlier this year with their criticism of Rumsfeld were all retired. But some of them insisted they spoke for active duty officers who couldn't come forward until they retired as well. That raised concerns that the generals were crossing the line, that during a time of war they were undermining the constitutional principle of civilian control of the military. I asked General Van Riper about that. 
you're the eighth general to come out and call for Secretary Rumsfeld to step down, but you're the first general to do it after President Bush said that he's my man, he is staying in the Pentagon. What are you trying to accomplish by doing this? Recall now, I haven't call, come out and called for his resignation. That's the president's decision of who stays. He serves at the president's. You, you think it would be a good idea for him to if step down? If I was the president, I would find myself a new secretary of defense. Even after the president has said he's sticking with who he's sticking with? Yes. So and what it, are you trying to accomplish is my question. What I'm trying to accomplish, I want to see this, con this debate continue. I want to see the discourse. I don't want all of the angry retorts to keep my fellow retired officers who believe the same as I do from not coming out. And you don't think this debate threatens the civilian leadership of the military? I do not think this threatens the civilian leadership of the military. This is the way our country, any democracy, is supposed to work. We would expect a doctor to come forth if we're talking about medical issues. We expect an economist when we're talking about economy. Why would a military man not come forward when we're talking about national defense. Does that hurt the war effort? It conceivably can hurt the war effort, but not to do so would hurt our country, would hurt our fellow citizens and those in uniform even more. We've heard a lot about your Rumsfeld rules <laughs> that you wrote, these quotes and sure. thoughts, reflections, yeah. and number 12 on that list is it's easier to get into something than to get out of it. Oh, it's so true. Is it easier to get in this time to Iraq than it is to get out of it? Oh, it is always easier to get into something than to get out of it. On the other hand, uh, it's always easier to do nothing than to do something. And, uh, is that another rule? I don't know. Coming up. You know, we've talked many times over the past four and a half years. I have never asked you this question. Um, Probably with good reason. <laughs> why he keeps fighting. And what President Bush is telling Rumsfeld inside the Oval Office. How'd it go? Good.